Welcome, and thank you for choosing Widestage as your new business intelligence tool. In this video, we will give you a short round about the main features to set you up to speed in the use of Widestage. We have built our Thule, with simplicity and ease of use in mind, so in a while you will be able to start exploring your data and getting the most of it. When entering, as an administrator for the first time, you will notice that there are three empty main areas in your home page. This is a normal behavior, as there are no published reports or dashboards, in your public area yet, and therefore, will show empty, as there are no execution history, the same happens in the last executions, and most executed blocks. As soon as you start executing reports or dashboards, those areas in your home page will show data on it. There are six main options in your main menu, those options will be visible or not depending on the user's permissions and level of access. First option is for users administration purposes, you will be able here to manage your users and roles, create, invite and block users as well as give and revoke permissions using roles. This should be visible by administrators only. The second option, allows you to create data connections that will be later used in reports, as well as create and administer the folder structure of the public area for users to publish and find out reports and dashboards. Next is layers, layers define the semantic that will use to access your data contained in connections. The semantic layer, provides an abstraction between your data structure at the connection level, and the business terms used by non-technical people. In Widestage you can define one or more semantic layers related to different business areas and, or data connections. The Explorer, is used by your users to explore, discover, query and visualizing the data without the need of a previous created report. My Reports, allows you to create and store your own reports, for executing any time you want. Reports are also the basis of your future dashboards, so you need to create first the report and then to add it into a dashboard. In my dashboards you can create your own dashboards, just placing reports into a single page. Let's start creating a simple data connection. In your main menu, go to connections. The list of connections will show up empty. Click over new connections, and the connection form will appear, in this case we are going to create a Postgres Club connection. So, choose Postgres in the connection type drop down, after that, type the name you are going to assign to this connection, as well as the rest of the connection parameters as host, port, user, password, etc. After inserting all required parameters, click Test Connection to see if can connect to your data source. Finally, click Create, to persist the connection in your connections pool. Your new connection will then appear in the connections list. As soon as we have at least one connection, we can then start creating layers to expose the connection data to the users. To do that, navigate through the main menu up to the Layers option, and click on it. Then click New Layer to start creating the layer, after that, a form will pop up, asking you for the name, and optionally, a description. Type a name for your layer and then click New Layer to save it. After that, the layer you just created will appear in the Layers list. You will notice the draft status of your layer. Next step, is to set up the layer. To do so, click over Designer to enter into the Layers Designer. The Layer Designer helps you to set up data entity relationships, the objects that will be published, and many other options to ensure the users using the layer will have a smooth operation without the hassles and complexities of the underneath data technologies. On the left hand side of the designer, three tabs will help you to navigate through the resources that your layer will provide. Elements are where your public elements will be visible, every time you publish an element in the layer will be shown here. You can also order the elements, group them into folders, set up format and other type specific parameters. The Connections tab, using reverse engineering techniques, retrieves the structure of your connections, extracting the entities, attributes, data types, and other useful information, to help understand the structure of your data to Widestage. In Connections, navigate through your connection structure just clicking into the different elements. After the connection the first level will be the schema, below you will find the entities and finally inside entities the attributes that belong to those entities, along with their data types, size, etc. Click the Add button at the right of the entity's name, to add that entity to your layer's model. 
Do the same with all entities, you may want to add to conform the basic data structure of your layer. Drag and drop the attributes from one entity to another, to set up the relationships between the entities. Those relationships will be used later by WideStitch to build the queries at runtime. Inside the entities, click over the plus symbol at the left of the attributes to add that particular attribute to the elements list of the layer. When publishing an attribute to your layer's elements, a form will pop up for you to choose how that particular element is going to be shown, what will be the default format, default aggregation for metrics, etc. Depending on the type of attribute some properties will apply or not. Do the same for all attributes you may want to publish. Create folders and reorganize your elements in a way that makes sense for your business users. Finally, save your layer, and click over the status badge to activate it, and your layer will be ready to go. On your main menu, click the Explorer icon to enter into the Data Explorer interface. Select your recently added layer from the drop-down in the Properties area of the Data Explorer. And then start dragging and dropping your elements to the Elements dropping area. Click Run, when you have all the necessary elements for your query, and then you will see the results of your query coming through. In the Explorer you can apply all the included features, to sort by one or more elements, apply filters, hide elements, and many other options, that we will go deep into, in a later tutorial. Let's see now how can we create and store report. In the main menu, navigate to the My Reports section. By now, the list will show empty. Click over New Report, to create a new one. The same Data Explorer interface will be shown, but notice the Cancel and Save buttons in the top right hand side. Select and drag and drop elements, the same way you did before when exploring your data. You can add elements and order by any of your layer's elements. Also you can filter your data accordingly. Choose then the type of visualization you prefer for this data. You can choose between the NAMO grid, the vertical grid, bar line chart, pie chart, HTML widget, or gauge chart. Each of those has their own properties and settings that we will see later. Once you are good to go, Click Save to persist your report. A pop-up asking for the name of the report will appear. Type your preferred name for the report and then, click Save again. Your brand new report, will then appear in your reports list. If you want to create a dashboard, first click on the dashboard icon you will find in your main menu. After that, click over New Dashboard and the designer will show up. The first thing you need when starting a new dashboard is to add a band, the band is an horizontal container that will contain your reports later on. Click over Add Dashboard Band to add your first band. A brand new band will appear in your canvas. Select the recently added band and click over New Report to add a report to the selected band. In the report list pop up, choose the report or reports you may want to add to your band, and then click Apply. You will see the report you just selected embedded into the dash band. Select the main dashboard canvas and click again over add dashboard band to add another horizontal band. As we did before, select the recently added band and click add report to add another report to the new band. If you want to add more reports to an existing band, just select the band and click over add report, like we have done previously. 
You will see then, that the width of the reports will be accommodated among the reports contained in the band in a responsive way. You can also select the different elements in your dashboard, like bands or reports, to change visualization properties, in a similar way you do that in a web page. As soon as you are ready to go, click over the Save button to save your dashboard. Insert the name of the dashboard in the pop-up dialog and click Save again. Your dash will appear in your list. Click over the recently added report to execute the report and you will see the result.